Oh, Von Ivan wants to co-cast. All right, I will definitely, uh, definitely bring Von Ivan in for uh, the next next set of teams. That'll be fun. But uh, until then, we'll just uh, we'll get started with this game. You can join me for the next one. All right. We do have combat engineers moving over here for the um, strategic point here, and we will note, of course, that the factions have switched. Lethal Pie and Easiest Pie now playing as Axis, and they're going to be playing as Mixed Axis. We have um, Kubel Wagon being produced over here by Easy, who will be playing over Commando West, and uh, Lethal Pie will be going with Double Grenadier Start. Meanwhile, we do have Double Soviets from Run to the Sun and Symbiosis, so no Americans, sadly, being chosen. Wow, Symbiosis already choosing a T-34-85 uh, Doctrine. I can't remember what this one is called with the heavy mortar. It's, uh, it's like guard, guard motor pool or something like that. Motor pool? Something with motor pool, I think. Run to the Sun, not choosing a Doctrine yet. He does have access to mechanized support, shock motor, uh, counterattack, so that's good. And it looks like um, Soviets are going to be able to control the right side fuel. Not a particularly hard push by Easy as Pi for these these points over here. Instead going to be setting up more here in the middle. We do have the Kuba Wagon moving over there. We have the Supply Half Track staying pretty defensive here in the back. We will have uh, Grenadiers moving up over there on the left and these Grenadiers moving for the strategic point so that fuel will be going to the axis. Looks like they're kind of just not going in particularly hard at any particular area of the map. Spreading themselves out, figuring out what a good, uh, where th what their opponent's doing, finding a good location to set up that half track. We do have a scout car on the field from Symbiosis already, and he has spotted Easy's SWS. So that's going to be forced away. It's probably going to get some pretty good damage on it, though, which is a great way to vet up, by the way. Get some free veterancy on your uh, scout car by getting those shots in at close range. Penal Battalion hitting the field from Symbiosis, so that's always fun to see. They are quite popular uh, these days, actually. Big changes to infantry combat have made them much better than they once were. I think they're a perfectly viable infantry unit. The only problem they have is that they don't have access to any long-range weaponry. It can only get the flamethrower, but it is important to note that the penal flamethrower can't explode randomly. It will never, that will never happen, and I don't know if that's a bug, but uh, whether it is or not, it does make their flamethrower probably the best one in the game. Much more reliable than any American flamethrowers, which are all, or any faction's flamethrowers, which seem to constantly just be exploding all over your own troops. Battle group headquarters being set up in a pretty conservative position, way back here, almost right in front of his base. The scout car will locate it, but there is a Raketan War for here, and uh, that's definitely going to be pushed away. Oh! Cool. Destroyed, in fact. Nice shot there. That's a pretty that's a pretty early Raketan War for him. While it did get its job, it did do its job of pushing that scout car off the field. I think that uh, it's going to leave him with a pretty weak infantry force. As you can see here, penal battalions getting managing to get quite close. We do have Lethal Pie bringing MG42 up. Grenadiers, plenty of support from his teammate, and he will be able to get that repaired. That's good to see, but unfortunately, they are not quite able to hold on to this fuel over here with conscripts moving up to decap the cutoff. Very nice. More conscripts moving across the middle, and that cool wagon's a little bit trapped. I don't know if Run to the Sun has anti-tank grenades yet. It would certainly be a little early for that. He, oh, unfortunately, he was researching them, but they're not done yet. What a shame. And the Kuba Wagon will be able to get to safety, I think. As long as he keeps it moving. Very nice. Raketan Warfare taking up a position in this house. This is actually a pretty good house for a Raketan Warfare. Uh, if you can destroy these fences, unfortunately, it will, I think, block shots. With those fences up, and of course, you can easily destroy that just by driving, smashing through them with the Kuba Wagon or your own supply half track. So it would be good to see that. We also have conscripts moving up here. And Ally is not quite managing to hold onto this fuel over here, but they do have control of this one, so it looks like the Allies have a pretty good, uh, pretty good hold on the map. 
Certainly doing very well for victory points, and the Axis are going to need... The enemy has got off a sector. ...need to t take control of some of these victory points. But at the very least, they have managed to get this fuel back. Looks like these folks grenadiers will be forced to retreat. We do have a forward retreat point being set up here, so Easy is really crippling himself for manpower, I think. Getting our Ket for and 300 spent on that forward retreat point. I'm not sure that there's really that much benefit to retreating here. It's... I'm not sure. It looks like... I mean, I guess that they are going to be defending largely this... This area, but it still seems kind of far away. Hopefully he's able to make it work, though. Grenadiers healing up. Snipers moving up, taking shots, ooh, on Stern Pioneers, which are always very juicy targets. Unfortunately, the Koopa Wagon hasn't really been repaired all that much, and it will be difficult to get those penals out of that area still, as long as they can hold on to the left side victory point. Oh! What was that? Was that a heavy mortar? Or did a mine get detonated or something? Some kind of mine went off, I think. I think that was a Soviet mine on those Stern Pioneers. That hurt. More mines actually going down here on the right side. Very nice. Could be a really nice grenade. Ooh, he retreats just in time, doesn't lose any full squads. The bleed still is pretty good. Four dead there. T only two dead in this one, so that's not that bad. Sniper also being forced away. Nice, very nice defensive line being set up here. The Kuba Wagon has been repaired. Uh, field guns moving up. Nice mine placement, by the way, by the Soviets. I think that those could definitely pay off, certainly if any of these vehicles hit them, but uh, looks like Lethal Pie is doing it. Is Purchasing that minesweeper, and hopefully he's going to be able to sweep some of those up. Constantly. Ooh, field gun gets a nice shot on that Google wagon, <laughs> but it does make it to safety. Grenadiers, however, needs to be a little more attentive. He could lose that. I think he'll probably get away. More mines going down here. Ooh, but they get caught by folks. Grenadiers will be forced to retreat. And the battle in this area continues. This green cover wall. This infamous Rails and Metal Green cover section where many battles have taken place over the last eight years. <laughs> Rail, uh, Conscripts taking up a position in the house there. These folks' grenadiers will be pushed back. The field gun is actually moving back to more defensive position. This mine actually getting detonated by those folks' grenadiers on retreat, inflicting only one model loss, unfortunately, so that mine didn't really pay off. Cool wagon quite badly needs repairs, but the Axis are doing uh, pretty nicely for themselves, making a decent push back here for the left and middle, but if they can't get the clock under control, that will be problematic. If we take a look at uh, tech decisions, we will see shock troops here from Run to the Sun. That's uh, going to indicate somewhat his doctrine choice, shock motor. Um, shock troops usually means KV-8s and IS-2s, but not necessarily. See if you can make good use of that. We also have Symbiosis choosing, of course, Guard Motor quite a while ago, but uh, he actually only has five units on the field right now. Possibly because he sustained some losses. I know his scout card did go down, and of course, snipers are very expensive to maintain and purchase, so that certainly will have something to do with that. And if we take a look at Easy. We will, of course, see the uh, Storm Officer and Panzer Fusilier, so he has chosen breakthrough tactics. We'll be going for the Yag Tiger, presumably, and if we take a look at the Lethal Pie, we still actually have no Doctrine selection. He's the last player to select a Doctrine. Could be Spearhead. In fact, if he chooses Spearhead, then that will mean that they've chosen the exact same build that their opponents just did, which is uh, Yag Tiger and Tiger's Spearhead and breakthrough tactics. Nice this shot going off on that 222, but it looks like it will get to safety. Very nice push by these uh, penal battalions, but unfortunately, I don't think Symbiosis has the munitions to do. Oh, maybe he does. That is going to be two. Oh, field gun repositions. Very nice. It is in position to finish that battle group headquarters. One more shot, possibly. Yes, there it goes. What a great push by those penal battalions. 
And I know Red X-Wings is probably really enjoying this match. He loves being on battalions, and he loves to see satchels going off on <laughs> on the battle group headquarters. So he's probably probably very happy to see that. So very nice push by the allies to quickly and efficiently take out that battle group headquarters in a very nice coordinated assault. Yes. Snipers moving up as well, taking shots at these folks, grenadiers. Unfortunately, Ooh, that was a nice mine. That mine actually killed the storm officer, forcing a retreat from both squads. Ooh, that was not so nice of a mine. It took only one model loss on those fusiliers. Could potentially snipe the remaining model on the retreat here. Oh, more mines getting detonated on retreat. Storm officer does go down. Snipers inflicting heavy losses. What a, what a bad state of affairs for the Axis. Yikes. The allies are really executing these these attacks quite well. Stuka hits the field. It is moving up. So hopefully that will be able to uh, bring the Axis back into this game a little bit. We'll see what he's able to do. More mines getting planted by Symbiosis. Man, he's just planting those all over the place this game. And we actually have a T-34 about to hit the field as well, and unfortunately with the Axis so behind, that T-34 is going to be the perfect counter to that Stuka. If he can just, if he just dives straight into it, he'll probably kill it, no problem. We do have a bit of a grin blob over here though from Lethal Pie. Hopefully he's able to push back these shock troops, but the snipers are going to uh, do some pretty nasty harassments, I think. Combat engineers moving up over here to retake some territory, do some harassment. Easy moving up with some infantry to push that back. Also moving up over here on the right side. Doing quite nicely. T-70 actually hitting the field from Run to the Sun. Good to see that. I hope he's able to make good use of it. His teammate has a T-34, so both of them have gone Tier 3 and brought in some medium or light armor. That's uh, that's very nice to see. Flamethrowers being forced away, however, by this overwhelming force of the infantry. T-70 immediately going in on these Grenadiers, and if he can keep it at range, he'll probably make quite a nice entrance here. A lot of shots colliding with terrain, unfortunately. I don't think the Stuka has revealed itself yet. Osmond also on the field. Osmond going to be a nice counter to that T-70, actually. Catches it sort of out of position. Oh, nice Panzer Shrek shot. Panzer Fusiliers are probably moving in for an anti-tank grenade. Looks like they couldn't quite get close enough. And the T-34 hits the field at the perfect time to push that Osmond back. Nice. So the T-70 will be screened nicely and it will make it to safety. Stuka still hasn't revealed itself, still hasn't fired. I think he doesn't quite know what he wants to shoot at. There's a half track on the field too from Run to the Sound. Look at these light vehicles, that's very nice. Very good to see, relying on his teammate to, thr uh, to, to throw out the medium armor so he, can, he himself can use vehicles in a more supporting role. The T-70 half track make great support units. 34 continuing to push that Panzer Shrek squad though will force it back and it looks like the engine will get repaired on that Osmond. Meanwhile we actually have the uh, victory points being taken by Panzer Fusiliers over here. Could see some harassment for the fuel. That's good to see. Uh, Conscripts moving up to retake this victory point over here on the left. T-70 also getting repaired, and we will note that some fuel caches have gone up uh, here in the back. No heavy mortar being purchased by Symbiosis, so it looks like he's just going to be utilizing this faction maybe just for maybe just for self-repair mark vehicle and, uh, and the T-3485s, but of course until he has access to those, he will be relying on T-34s. Run to the Sun, on the other hand, uh, has called in some shock troops. I would be surprised to see armored vehicle detection, though. That forward mine actually does wipe two two models from that uh, Panzer Fusilier squad. Meanwhile, over here, Munitions Point is being taken by these minesweepers. They're going to be forced back by the T-70, though. Ostman also moving up over here on the left. Finally, the Stuka does reveal itself, possibly firing on this field gun. 
no. Firing on uh, these Pino Battalions, actually. It looks like it didn't get too many kills, though. Ooh, one squad does get wiped by the Grenadiers, though. Ooh, what was that? Something just went down. Oh, the T-70 died. I think it got taken out by that pack. That's unfortunate. The half-track is still alive, though. Over here, meanwhile, uh, looks like the Allies making a pretty good push for that fuel point. So the Axis will need to respond to that. Austin continuing to harass Allied infantry. I think it's worth noting, actually, that the Austria player even has an Austin. That's pretty surprising. Usually, uh, usually players will hold out for a ch for a Panzer IV, but hopefully he's able to make good use of it. Maybe he didn't feel that he he could afford to wait any longer and needed the Austin as soon as possible, or maybe he just uh, feels that it's a good purchase. Either way, so far it has not had much of an impact. It's not able to do much against this T-34, and it has I really think it's anti-infantry performance. It's just not good enough to justify purchasing it, but, um... We'll see what he's able to do. Oh! As soon as I say that, he almost wipes out a sniper. Of course, the keyword there being almost. The sniper does make it to safety thanks to Sprint. T-34 screening will mean that the Austin can't get too aggressive, but we do have a pretty decent push here going. Left side, pack moving up to support. Austin helping. Lots of Grenadiers with LMGs as well. More mines being detonated over here. Panzer Fusiliers just can't do any harassment with this, this constant explosions. So many mines. Folks Grenadiers getting some free vet against that half track. Shock troops also not very well positioned. Were he to charge with those, he would almost certainly get focused down in no time. Looks like he's gonna try anyway, but that that's doomed to fail. There's no way. <laughs> no way anything's gonna happen there. Two of them go down. Meanwhile, over here, the Allies are... Ooh, this could be a pretty nice push. Catches that machine gun so out of position, unfortunately. And the Stuka is going to have to reposition as well. The Stuka actually only has one kill from that barrage earlier, so I guess it was a little bit off target. And I think that Easy is... It looks like Easy is only using the Stuka to fire on snipers. I think he is... That's the only thing he's interested in taking out. He hasn't used it to fire on any other targets this entire time. As far as I can tell. But while that while holding out for a good barrage against enemy snipers does of course pretty much keep them completely off the field, it means that uh, you're not really getting the most out of your Stuka. Potentially wiping out infantry. That sort of thing. Wow, that pack though is Vet 3. A Vet 3 pack is a devastating, devastating unit used effectively, and it looks like that penal battalion will go down. Very nice. The Austin only has three kills, but I guess I guess the kills it does get is definitely making them count. I think we will see Mark Vehicle actually going off on that Austin. The plane I'm just about immediately gets shot down, though. Landing in this area. Snipers taking shots at Axis Infantry over here, and two T-34-85s are getting called in. Marked vehicle still happening on the Austin. Looks like he was thinking about going, uh, going in. Looks like he is going to do it. Yes, here, the, here they come. The pack has been cleared by those snipers, unfortunately, so he doesn't have that as an effective deterrent, and that Austin's rear armor doesn't stand a chance with the bonus damage from marked vehicle. I think that Austin has no no chance of survival here. And there it goes. The other T-34 also moving up to support. These waves of allied medium armor are going to be very difficult to stop now. So much fuel invested into an Austin just leaves them with no solution here. Rakenwerfer trying to do what it can, but T-34-85 is so tanky. has so much health it's really hard to finish off. Lots of Panzerfausts and tricks going off though, trying to do what they can. 
still, I think he might be getting a little over aggressive with that. He needs to be careful. We actually see Bet4 on this squad. Stuka Barrage also going out, potentially wiping out some of these tanks. Let's see what happens. Oh, that landed a little off target, I think. Just a little off target. I think that definitely had the potential to be devastating, but unfortunately it just didn't quite connect. There is a Stug on the field, though. Stug is hitting the field, fresh pack. I think this pack uh, was recovered. Yes, it was. So that's actually, I guess that's the same pack with new troops. So good to see that. That was just a, a great push by Symbiosis. He sustained no real losses, inflicted massive damage, and will make it away with both of his tanks alive. Good to see that aggression. Keeping the Axis at bay. Unfortunately, the Stuka did not get spotted. That being said, the Stuka hasn't really done much this game. The fact that the allies know it exists is going to affect their behavior, but uh, really it just has not quite managed any, uh, any great barrages. One good barrage on those snipers could be game-changing. One good barrage even on just a significant allied blob, AT weapons, anything really. Unfortunately, it just, ooh, just hasn't happened. Sniper taking heavy damage almost goes down. It actually forces a retreat. Stug does have a machine gun upgrade. It would take a miracle, I think, to finish off one of those, though, and he doesn't quite get his miracle. Maxim in the house here. Could potentially be a juicy target for that Stuka. Oh, I need to drink more coffee. Uh, stayed up too, la too late last night killing orcs. <laughs> Symbiosis already has those tanks fully repaired. Wow. He is going to continue to bleed those grenadiers. The Stug. I think the Stug is potentially a good choice. It's it's going to be micro intensive though. T3485 is of course just in massive numbers can overwhelm Stugs quite easily. And comes down to the usage of target weak points and position. Lots of fighting happening over here and we actually have a T-3476 produced by Run to the Sun so <laughs> he has actually produced every single tier 3 vehicle available to him. He's produced one of each so let let it never be said that uh, Run to the Sun does not utilize combined arms. <laughs> he has a very diverse army this game. Maxim field gun, one of every tier 3 vehicle, one shock troop squad, and some conscripts, so <laughs> that is, that's a beautiful thing to see, and now an ISU 152 hitting the field, so very nice diversity in Run to the Sun's army, Symbiosis on the other hand is just a dirty dirty sniper spammer, <laughs> snipers, in, snipers into medium tanks, he did not utilize guards though, so Certainly nowhere near as bad as Barton, for example. Minesweeper being purchased over here. These S mines proving to be quite annoying. Or not not S mines. What am I talking about? There are S mines here. Yeah, yeah, there are S mines. I knew I heard S mines going off. T3485 is continuing to push the axis back. This pack is in position. It does hit that one. He could utilize target weak point, but unfortunately, it will get clear of the blast area and victory points are just so so low and the axis just have so little I think there's really nothing that they're gonna be able to do we actually have an elephant being called in by lethal pie which wow that, that that makes me really happy to see that but it's really unfortunate that I don't even think that the allies will ever see that unit triple capped eight points remaining T-34 just Bullying these infantry here. Clock does get slowed, but it's not enough. Three points remaining now. And that's such a shame that this elephant's not going to make it onto the field. I would have I would have enjoyed to see that. But that will conclude the game. So that is it. That means that all stars, Symbiosis and Run to the Sun, will be moving on into the winner's bracket and easy or er, yes, easy as pie will be falling down into the loser's bracket. So that was a fun game. That was 
Definitely uh, some really good plays executed by the Allies there. Good unit preservation all around. Excellent pushes on the Battle Group Headquarters. Not entirely sure I agreed with Battle Group Headquarters placement this game, but uh, that's just my opinion. I'm certainly no expert on that. So that's going to conclude the game, and I'm going to update the brackets. We're going to take a short break. I'm going to try and get Von Ivan into Mumble, and we'll see if we can cast the next.